So I'm on the road again, and I, at this point, have watched all the way up till Saw the final chapter. Um, I would have watched Jigsaw tonight, but I did not bring it. So instead, I'm just going to try to review a couple of these before I go to bed here. It is like already 1.30 in the morning, though, so this probably will be my only review of the night. I doubt I'll do the 6 or 7. Um, but yeah, so... Let's talk about Saw 5 really quick. Um, this was the one where I went to the theater and I was pretty underwhelmed when I left. That being said, upon rewatching this um, over the years, I've seen it maybe five times now or more, um, and just rewatching it, obviously. I like it more and more every time I watch it. I think the weakest part of this and where I can tell they rushed it was on the game. You know, the guys who have to work together. Spoilers, obviously, for this and the whole series. Um, but the fact that, like, like, the whole first 20 minutes of the movie uh, is solid. And then that's where the game starts. And it's not that I dislike the game, because I think the game's fine. Like, it's okay. Like, it's it's fine. You know, I don't love it, but that is the weakest part. But I love the first 20 minutes. I love all the Hoffman and Jigsaw stuff. Like, and basically everything that takes place outside of the game, I love. And then that game, I'm just like, this is kind of cool. There's some good gore and there's some good... Th but the game is so obvious that they need to work together. Like, it's so obvious. Especially in the second room when there's... Like, they get to jump into the pipes to live or whatever. And it's like, those are clearly big enough for more than one person. How did you guys not figure this out? It... I don't... <laughs> It's, it's super silly. That's super silly. But anyways, let's talk about it. Uh, let's talk about the movie, as always. Um, so, as usual, this kind of starts where four leaves off. Uh, you know, with Strom stuck in that room, he goes and he finds the tape, which, as I said, Hoffman has to put it in there. Now, I have watched all the way up till seven, as I said, and it is never explained if Hoffman. Uh, messed with Jigsaw's games or if he was the one who tipped off uh, Perez and Strom and all that. So I'm just guessing it at this point. That's what makes sense to me. Um, so we've got uh, Strom and he goes and he takes the tape and listens to it and he's like, fuck you, like fuck your warning. And he walks forward and he's put in the head tank thing which I don't have the box for the movie here because I watched it at home. I'm not at home, obviously. Um, but on the box, I think I showed it in, yeah, I showed it in my like Saw 2 review or 3, something like that. Uh, it actually has the box and you put up the DVD and the DVD has the water on it. Pretty cool. I love that scene. I love that scene where Strom is just, he's in a death trap. He's in one of Amanda and you know Hoffman's styles death trap it's Hoffman's but I'm just saying like it's their style where you just can't get out of it he's there to die and um he you know gets out of it by taking a pen and giving himself a tracheotomy which I just that's so badass that's so fucking badass it's insane I I like I lost it in the theater. I was just like, oh, that was so awesome. Like, this guy has no options. And he figures it out. He MacGyvers himself out of the situation. Um, I think before that, though, we have the pendulum thing. I think that's how it starts. And then it moves into the Strom thing. But I want to talk about the Strom thing first. Um, but the pendulum, another, you know, can't get out of it trap. The uh, freaking... Uh, the dude puts his hands and he has to crush his hands so that this pendulum, you know, pit in the pendulum, the pendulum won't come down and cut him in half. And uh, he sticks his hands in, crushes them, 
which should release it and it doesn't because obviously it's not a real jigsaw trap it is Hoffman and he is uh, pretending to be and to pin it on jigsaw so that he can kill the dude who killed his sister which you know I like these later installments they start to show the other side of like people who are faking things like someone fakes that they are jigsaw another person fakes that they survived jigsaw when they didn't like I like that there's liars out there who will use horrendous things like this to their advantage and lie um, but man that shit's graphic this series just does not get enough credit for just how insanely realistic some of their gore is. I know that people are like, oh, this is torture porn and all it is is blah, blah, blah. But like, because of that, I feel like we don't even discuss how incredible the gore is. Like they just look at it and they're like, oh, it's just stupid torture porn, whatever. And they're not giving any credit to the incredible practical effects on display within these films. like almost the majority of them like 98 percent of the gore effects in these movies are practical and they're unbelievably realistic but you'll never hear them talk about them like they should be they should be uh you know up there with savini's work or it should be up there with uh you know rick baker or any it is in fact it's better than pretty much anything savini's ever done Oh yeah, I'll get blasted like a motherfucker for that. I don't give a shit. It is incredible stuff. It is so fucking insanely realistic. It is so much gorier and graphic than anything Savini ever displayed. And of course he's at a disadvantage. This he this is a company with more money. They, you know, it's later on, so they have more experience with this kind of stuff. And I'm sure those people learn from Savini's techniques. I'm not saying that. But I'm not a person that holds things sacred. If it's better, it's better. And this is some of the best gore ever on screen. Period. So yeah, blast me. I don't care. <laughs> it's the truth. Um, I keep wanting to call the guy that he puts his hands in there um, Dick Baxter. <laughs> you know, from Halloween. When she has Dick Baxter, he'd go out with you. Um, but it's like Sh Sean Baxter or Seth Baxter. Seth Baxter. That's the guy who kills his sister. She kid getting a name in my head. I can't talk very loud because everyone's asleep upstairs. My kids and whatnot. So <laughs> I hope you guys can hear me. Um, and as I said, like I think the tape is meant for for Jeff. And I think that, you know, Hoffman switched it out or he, there was no tape there or whatever. And maybe the the water trap, I don't know if that ever exists because it's still in the building. How does Jigsaw not even know that's in the building? So maybe that was supposed to be his trap? Like strong, uh, Hoffman was supposed to grab Jeff and give him a chance to somehow get out of there, but it's a death trap. I don't know. Like that, that's where it starts to get a little confusing. And of course you just kind of have to be like, well, you know, explain it away. Um, I'm not just giving this film like the pass or this series, the pass, but it's just, it's one of those things where you just have to be like, well, you know, it is what it is. I don't have an explanation for it, but that doesn't mean that it's outright bullshit. Um, the kid is saved, which Jigsaw very much says, like, if you want to find your kids, you'll have to play another game. That's just not true. Hoffman gets the kid, so that's what I'm saying. Hoffman had to have fucked with Jigsaw's game. And ultimately, that's why Jigsaw uh, has Gordon go after him, because he, you know, he knows Jill's probably... He knows Jill's in danger, and he knows that Hoffman is not able to be trusted. That's why he sends Jill after Hoffman should I say. And then Dr. Gordon goes after him because of you know, what happens to Jill. But we'll talk about that in the seventh one, obviously. Um, and where am I? Um, Jill gets bombs. 
So in this one, Joel gets the box from the will. And this is what I'm saying. Like, there's so much cool setup. And, and the way I've always described this film to people, because a lot of people get down on this movie, and I totally understand that. But I've always explained this film as just filler. And it's not a bad thing. Like, filler to me isn't a terrible thing. Like, this is just, like... It's giving us little pieces that we need throughout. Like This movie, for me, really is just about showing us the relationship between Hoffman and Jigsaw. Because, as I said, the third one kind of left them with this uh, void. They were just like, well, we killed Amanda, we killed Jigsaw. Like, good luck keeping this series alive. And with the fourth one, they needed a twist. And the twist needed to be the new apprentice, the new guy to take over. But they couldn't really do the story of Jigsaw and him in that one. So they had to save it for a later installment. And I think that they got under the time crunch with this one. So they really didn't focus on the, the game as much as the relationship between Hoffman, Jigsaw, how that all worked out, the dynamic, the reasons, all that. So I really kind of just feel like this film is there to bridge four, which leaves us with so many questions, to six, which answers a good majority of our questions. Um, and then seven just kind of closes, you know, tie, you know, ties up all the loose ends, for the most part. Um, there's still questions, obviously, but it, a lot of them are, are answered. Um, and I mean, yeah, as I said, they have to work together. That that shit is so obvious. Um, frustratingly so. Like when I was in the theater, and I think everyone was like this because I've watched this with people for the first time, and they're like, "But more people could fit in that tube." And why didn't one just release their collar and then go around and break the keys out and give them to everyone? Like, it's so simple. But that goes back to my point of what I was talking about in a lot of these reviews, where you're scared. You're not thinking straight. So I'm not, like, I'm not saying this wouldn't happen. This might. Like, because at the end, he's like, we were supposed to, we were supposed to help each other. And she figures that out with him. And then he's like, you know, whoops. And she's like, yeah, big fucking whoops. I don't know. If you put five people in this situation and you put like 10 sets of them in this situation, how many of them would figure out to work together? I think some would, yes. But I think some wouldn't. And this is just a group that didn't. Like as stupid as it seems, because it's easy to sit back in a theater and be like, well, come on, that's easy. But, like, if you're in the situation, you might not be able to gauge the size of that pipe just because you're so, like, you know, focused on, like, okay, I got to get these out of here. I'm looking for a key. Everyone's yelling. People are turning on each other. They're hitting each other over the heads. Like, can you think like that? I mean, no one really can. So I have to just look at it like that because that's reality. I mean, you can look at it and be like, that's just bad writing. And I'm not going to disagree that this game is, you know, um, not as well written as the others. I, I definitely will agree on that. But as I said, the more I watch this movie, the more I explore, uh, enjoy it. Um, and the room explodes as they leave it because, you know, otherwise they would be able to stay behind. So I like that they kind of explain that. Um, and we get to see uh, John abduct Hoffman and, and do the whole like shotgun to his face thing and prove that he's committed to it and they have the big long conversation. I just, as I said, I love all the interactions between Hoffman and John. I just think they're so well done. I just, I'm just i such a big fan of uh, Costas Mandalore, isn't that his name? Is that how you say it? Um, but, you know, the actor that plays Hoffman, I, I just think he's fantastic. Rewatching all of these now and seeing him from three all the way up till seven, 
I just think he's the best villain in this series. I, I just love him. I think he's fantastic. So I remember at the end of four, I was like, huh? But now uh, I just think he's great. Um, and then, yeah, so the, the razor wire still being there when Strom goes to look at the trap that Jigsaw had, I don't know. Like, I feel like that would all be in evidence. That's just a super silly, stupid little thing. I think they just left it there so people would be like, oh, I remember that trap from part one. Um, and then the Strom setup begins. Uh, Hoffman is, is going around to Erickson and everybody and, and getting them to think that he is responsible as the second accomplice they never knew about. Um, and we get to see John and uh, Hoffman abduct the, the big dude that goes in the razor wire together. So cool to see that actor back, to see them setting it up, for them to be watching on the outside and, and know that it's strong, uh, Hoffman that was watching that one. I just love finding out little single pieces like that. It just completely changes your perspective when you go back and watch one. You're like, oh, wait. Hoffman put him in there with John and Hoffman's the one sitting there and watching him when he fronts books front row seats and leaves the pen light like they address every single teeny little thing and it's incredible um and let's see we get to see them set up the house from part two they get to see, you get to see them like set up the gun we get to see them dragging in like the dude who plays Abby like as I said like he came back just to play an unconscious body so that the continuity is flawless. He hasn't been in a movie. This is, he hasn't been in a movie in three movies and he just came back to play an unconscious body. That's amazing to me. It is just amazing to me. The, the, the commitment to the continuity because they had to pay that actor to fly out to do that. That's incredible. I love it. Anyway, um, and <clears throat> yeah, this black chick at the end, they just turn on her. There's like, everyone's turning on each other in that game. That uh, freaking just sticks her in the neck and they just shock her whole body and just throw her in that tub and she's just so messed up. Um, and Hoffman was in the room talking to Jigsaw literally like a second before Lynn was carted in there that was cool to see so like just and when you watch three now you know that like right as Lynn was coming through those doors like Hoffman sneaking out the side door and setting up the traps for everything <sighs> so awesome <laughs> um and yeah they we get another saw where these guys have to saw through their hands. And when they pull them out, that guy pulls his hand out and it's like cut here all the way down to here and it's like separated and it's all swinging. See what I'm talking about? The gore is incredible. That looks so damn realistic. It's crazy. Um, I don't know why they didn't bring the chicken from the tub because they were like, well, what if we don't bring in like the water from the, and they're like, well, you can't because of this. And it's like, well, you could grab the chick out of the tub and bring her in and stick her arm in and it get, get at least like five or six pints of blood out of her or whatever like at very you know at the minimum so i think that's a little bit of a flaw there <laughs> it could have brought her body with them because the door was still open and she was in the tub and the circuits had already been crossed and everything so that was silly but it doesn't matter um, and they both accept that they're awful people and that they deserve to be there, so they do it together. And uh, we know that for sure the crackhead survives because he, or tweaker, uh, if that's the same thing. Is that the same thing? I don't know. I don't know drugs. Um, <laughs> I really don't. Um, but uh, we see him in Saw 7, the final chapter in that uh, support group. So he definitely lives. I don't know if Julie Ben's character lives or not, the chick from Dexter, but uh, she might have, uh, but she's not at that meeting. Um, and he does give, I mean, Hoffman usually doesn't give people a chance to survive, but we get the glass coffin that is teased in part four. And here it is again. And, uh, 
Hoffman gives him the chance to live. He goes in that room and he's like, you know, he plays him the right tape. He says, like, get in the coffin and you'll be fine. Strom doesn't do it. Hoffman goes in and boom, crushes his body. We get to see his body crushed right as Erickson's finding the evidence that, you know, Strom is the accomplice, which lasts for a whole fucking film. <laughs> um, but he does. And we get to see like his arm break and it comes, oh my God, it's so nasty. And then at the beginning of six, we get to see what, you know, the aftermath, which is just fucking crazy looking. Oh my good God. Um, and yeah, so that's Saw 5. Um, I feel like it is the weakest entry in the series. I probably put it dead last at number eight but still a really good time. That's what I'm saying. Like even the weakest entry in this, in this series, I still really enjoyed revisiting. I liked it a lot. I like it a lot. Um, so yeah, anyways, um, time is it? Okay. I'll do one more. All right, let's go. <laughs> 